0032. We had council in court, and we also hopefully have council on court call now. Do we now have council on court call? Uh, yes, Your Honor. Joe Hong for appointments. <coughs> okay, so we heard that. Now we need in court, please. And Joe Coppage for uh, Norfolk and as an individual and as trustee of the Hanson Trust, Your Honor. Madonna Woody for Defendant Nation Star. David Ochoa for Sun City Inn. Okay, so here's what we have is today was the day for the status check on the settlement documents, and then we're going to walk through the court received something different. Um, a, received a proposed motion on order shortening time, but since I was going to have all the parties here, it made more sense to mention it to you all than to address it. Um, and then have issues happen. So first, settlement documents. What's up? Settlement. So we were going along with settlement, and then there was a reconsideration motion filed on the HOA's motion for summary judgment. And okay. we think that we are going to need to wait for that ruling in order to finish the settlement. The settlement agreement is finally um, drafted. I believe it's executed. We're just waiting on funds. but. We now decided to wait for the transfer of funds until after that reconsideration motion is heard because it could possibly affect our settlement. Oh, is that other parties' agreement? Understanding as well? Anybody else wish to chime in on that? Um, Sun City Amp is not a party to the settlement agreement. Um. Okay, Mr. Hong, on, what, on court call, do you wish to <laughs> chime in on the question? Um, uh, I that's absolutely correct, Your Honor. The settlement docs have been signed between Nation Star and my clients, but in terms of uh, effectuation with payment and whatnot, uh, we're waiting for the court's ruling on the uh, motion for reconsideration. Well, you're not waiting for the court's ruling because it's not even scheduled until May 30th, um, and you all are set for your calendar call on May 23rd, which presents an interesting challenge, doesn't it? Because the court in no way taking any opinion on the timing or the lack of timeliness on that motion for reconsideration and whether the court could or could not even address it. The court's merely looking for purposes of its statements that I'm only looking at calendaring. I'm not saying anything's properly filed. I'm not taking any position on anything. I'm just looking at calendaring. When I look at calendaring, I see calendar call May 23rd. I see motion for reconsideration May 30th, which would mean at the calendar call, Everyone would have to have everything ready for trial. Was that all the party's intention? I, I guess, thank you, Your Honor. Maybe, perhaps, that's our motion on the OSC that was set, um, that was submitted. I suspect it might be. Uh, Ms. Tobin has requested that we withdraw, and so we submitted uh, on Thursday or Friday a, a motion to withdraw on her shortening time. Friday at 4.10, we got it. That's when you got your honor. Okay, but that's not before me today. I understand your honor. But, okay, but what this court needs to know, okay, is purely, do you all want to appear on May 23rd with everything that's due at a calendar call? It's, that's the way things are currently, the way you all have set this up, everyone needs to appear on May 23rd with a calendar call. Is that the intention of the parties? The court's fine with it. Your Honor, I would request that the uh, motion for reconsideration is heard first because... Are you a party to that? And have you opposed it? And do you have any basis? Are you involved in that? Uh, it was our order that yeah. they uh, filed the reconsideration for, and we have since filed an objection to the motion for reconsideration. Um, my understanding is that the, the other parties are attempting to settle. That would resolve all issues if the motion for reconsideration is denied. So I would request that the calendar call gets pushed out until after that hearing if everything is potentially going to be resolved at that hearing date. You know it's currently set for chambers, right? Motions for reconsideration as a matter of due course are set on chambers unless somebody requests that it be in open court or the court Would, resets it. Your Honor, if I may, uh, if I may uh, that's fine being in chambers, but oh, no, I, I think no. what counsel just it's not going to be in chambers. If it's opposed, first thing I'm going to tell you is it's not going to be in chambers, but it's a okay. matter of scheduling. 
when I have an opposition I and I have a pending other issues going on and I have multiple party issues, the more appropriate thing is to take it off my chamber's calendar and put it on for hearing unless I have an objection by somebody who says that you specifically want it to be on chambers and then I have explicit waivers from everyone with regards to any issues that get addressed most fully in the waivers. Um, with regards to that motion for reconsideration for any party that is a part of that motion for reconsideration. So, the only opposition I have is Sun City Anthem. We just heard councils, oh, by the way, oh, sorry, from Madam Court Recorder and Madam Clerk standpoint, as much as I know who you all represent, when you do speak, can you just say on behalf of which party? So, council, you just were speaking on behalf of Sun City Anthem. Okay. Oh, excuse me, since I had Mr. Hong in the interview. Mr. Hong, can you restate you were speaking on behalf of which parties? Uh, yes, Your Honor. Uh, the Stokes parties, the plaintiffs. You've got to be clearer than that, Counsel. Remember, we have a unique aspect in this case that you're, you have clients that are... So are you Jimmy Jack Irrevocable Trust as well, or just the Stokes? Uh, it, it's the Jimmy Jack Revocable Trust through its trustees, Joe and Sandra Stokes, Stokes, Your Honor. I do appreciate it. Thank you so very much. In council previously, who filed the opposition, you were speaking on behalf of Sun City Anthem, is that correct? That is correct, sir. Okay. And since I didn't have you say your name again, would you mind saying it? Uh, David Ochoa for Sun City Anthem. Um, I would also like to point out, Your Honor, I believe you said our opposition was the only thing filed, but I believe both the bank and Mr. Hung, who was on the phone, I think they both filed joinders to my opposition. I probably should have phrased it as the only, the only courtesy copy the court got. So the only thing the court's aware of, because courts aren't aware of things until we get courtesy copies, right, would be from Sun City Anthem. Now, we've got five days before the hearing, so I'm not saying that other documents aren't otherwise yet due. But when I look at my goodie package of what we currently have, that's what I was basing it on. So, Bank, you filed a joinder, is that correct? That's correct. And that would be? Yes, Your Honor. Sorry. Council, name. Sorry, it's for Nations I appreciate it. Counsel for the Stokes as trustees for Jimmy Jack, did you also file a joinder? Yes, Your Honor. Okay, well, so what do the parties want with regards to the motion for reconsideration? It's our motion, Your Honor. It's Ms. Tobin's motion. So I, I think that Mr. Ochoa, okay, it's a, a, a joke copage for uh, Ms. Tobin as an individual and as trustee of the Hanson Trust. I think Mr. Ochoa is correct on that it makes sense to have the calendar call after the hearing on the 30th, I think from a timing standpoint. Well, has everyone, when sh you have not yet filed a reply, have you? We have not. It's, it's due on, on Thursday, Your Honor. Thursday. Okay. So. Okay. Thursday. Do the day of the calendar call, so you all file that. Well, so what? But you've got a bench trial on June fifth, which presents a challenge. I can move the calendar call to the week before the bench trial, but I can't move it any later than that, can I? I can't. Is the answer. So it seems to me what I can do is I can do. Here's this Thursday. One second. The bench trial, depending on any ruling, in its current status, the bench trial, current status, is between Mr. Hong, your clients, correct, and Ms. <coughs> Tobin in her correct. role as individual and as trustee. Is that correct? That's correct, Your Honor. That's the only thing that's remaining. Currently, subject to any future rulings, the court that may or may not occur. Is that correct? That's correct. So can you, can you repeat that, Your Honor, about what I issues are remaining? Currently, as you all are standing, sitting here today, right, is that what is left in this case, pursuant to what you all informed the court the last time you were here, was the only remaining claims were between, I'm just going to informally call, Stokes as trustee for Jimmy Jack, Ms. Tobin and Ms. Tobin, Ms. Tobin 
slash Ms. Tobin, trustee, with the court taking no position on the propriety of those designations or anything, but just purely nomenclature-wise. That's the current status subject to any future rulings of the court. David, I show up for Sun City at the Meyer Greenberg. Okay. I mean, that's what you all told me a couple weeks ago. So unless there's something different, that's what the current status is as right now, right? Okay. That's correct. And so that's why you all said bench trial short time frame. So for the parties that are involved in that aspect, if I were to do the following, could things still move forward? Because we're not moving the trial, okay? Um, is if I put your, <coughs> I move the motion for reconsideration. You got your reply not until Thursday, right? Okay. Um, if I did the motion for reconsideration at 8.30 on the 29th, and then I did your calendar call on Monday, June 3rd at 9 a.m., and I would only do that if I need to know how many documents we're talking about in the current status of the case, and this is all subject to Different rulings could result in different things. The courts have to deal with what the case is currently. How many documents on behalf of Tobin Party's first counsel? Exhibits, Your Honor? Well, I assume you've done your 2.67 on this case because. We've, we've met with Mr. Hall, we did it on the phone because he's at a town on the do. I don't have a precise number of finalists yet. Um, in number of four inch binders. Is he going to fill up more than one four inch binder? No, no, I think one. I think one's fine. Okay. Yeah, I'm just trying to get a ballpark. You know, you see the binders behind Madam Clark. It's going to serve more exhibits than you know, pieces of paper that are there. Maybe two, Your Honor. Maybe two. Okay, so it's actually nine four inches. Okay, so on behalf of the Stokes as Jimmy Jack, how many exhibits would you have separate and apart from plaintiffs' exhibit? We have we have none, Your Honor. None. Okay. Well, that makes life easy. Okay, with that limited number of exhibits, the reason why I'm trying to say is that we could do this, since it's a bench trial, to still keep your date because of the age of this case being a 2015, trying to balance everything, realizing that once again, if my other trial goes forward, I either may be blending you in since it's a bench trial or maybe going to overflow, we're not sure yet. But, or there may be some third option, but where the things stand today, which is what I need to address, it looks like I could do the following. I can move the motion for reconsideration to the 29th at 8.30, because then no one would be prejudiced because you're just moving it from Friday to Thursday and you're putting it in open court, which allows parties, since there's oppositions and joinders, to address what they need to address. I can put your calendar call, presuming all parties will be, are the, the exhibits, the short number of exhibits, since I have none from defendants, I mean none from the Stokes parties, I'm, I'm not going to say your exact party designations. Then that would allow us still to have that happen because you still would have your proposed findings, facts, conclusions of laws basically making it do then too. So you got that taken care of. So that seems like it makes everything work for the parties, does it not? So the calendar call is what? That, Joe Long, you're on it. That would work. June 3rd at 9 a.m. I'd have to do a special setting on June. Actually, June 3rd at 8.45 because I'm going to be in trial, no matter which trial I'm in. So June 3rd at 8.45. You all heard me say 8.45, right? Everybody heard me say 8.45? Yes, Your Honor. 8.45. Sharp. Yes, everybody heard 8.45 a.m.? Yes, okay. June 3rd. Does that work? Yes, Your Honor. Okay, so Madam Clerk, can you please move the motion for reconsideration to the 29th at 8.30? Please move the calendar call and everything that's due at the calendar call, June 3rd at 8.45. Okay, that's what was pending for today. So the status check on settlement documents is complete because based on the party's request, the court finds good cause for not providing what you needed to provide. Now the court received, pursuant to OST as I mentioned, 410 on Friday, a motion to substitute real party and interest and to withdraw as counsel of record for counterclaimant Nona Tobin on order shortening time. The court, since you all were coming in, it made more sense. And since this motion covered, requested motion covered a lot of different things, it made more sense to hear what the party's opinion are for the court setting this on order shortening time while I have you here in court, or at least telephonically in court. I'm sorry, 
Donna coordination, sorry. Did Ms. Wood coordination, sorry. Can you repeat the motion again? Because I've been Did you provide it to opposing counsel before you filed it? We, it's not submitted. Filed. It's submitted, submitted to, to the court. It's submitted to the court. So they've not seen this yet, Your Honor. Okay. So, I can explain oh. what's in motion, though, if it's, if it's helpful. I've noticed Joe Copley. Here. Um, why don't I say, sure, give the two-second version, because i got a courtroom full of people, if you don't mind. Fine. Oh, uh, the title? It's, it's to substitute Ms. Tobin as an individual for Ms. Tobin as trustee of the Hanson Trust, Your Honor, because we learned, I learned recently that Ms. Tobin had deeded the property from herself as trustee to herself as an individual and closed the trust. And so the real party in interest, Your Honor, under Rule 17 is Ms. Tobin as an individual, she also asked that we withdraw as counsel for her to allow her to proceed as an um, in, in pro se. And so that's the purpose of the motion is to substitute her as an individual and also to allow her to proceed pro se with the, uh, the hearing on the motion to reconsider um, the calendar call and the trial of this matter on June 5. And she has told us that she'll be ready to do all those things, Your Honor, timely. You know, and then just to let you know, there was nothing attached to this motion showing any transfers or anything like that. So the court just saw the OST. The court takes no position one way or another. But So the court was inclined, well, I'll tell you, the court was inclined to set this for the same day as the 29th, that I would be doing the motion for reconsideration because the court's concerned about so many different things on a pending motion that's been filed by counsel to take it over at the last minute with a trial on June 5th to have so many different issues be outstanding and to have it substituted, who, regardless of who would be substituted in. And because this could have been filed way back when, and it's got no, nothing attached to it to show any transfers or anything, the court was not inclined to, well, I've got an intervening holiday. It looks like when you all decided to file it, you kind of put yourselves in the situation of, when it can be heard, because if you filed it months ago, I could have heard it months ago, right? But you choose when you filed it, so you chose when you filed it, which means the court has to set it out. Can't hear it this week anyway, because of all the other pending matters that are going on, so it'd have to be next week, the first possible date anyway. Do I have a position from any of the other parties? Donna, would it for Nation Star? I really have no position on that. Either the hearing date or the <coughs> David Ochoa for Sun City Anthem. Um, I would be opposed to setting the motion at that time. And, uh, there's been assertions by Nona Tobin in the past that she's made transfers. Uh, Council, I can't get into any substance. Purely, since I have you all here, it made sense. If somebody's going to object to an order shortening time versus me setting this out 30 some odd days, right? That's really the question the court's asking. I'm giving an inclination where I'm inclined to go. I'm hearing if anyone has any opposition purely from a scheduling standpoint. Not going into any merits, because in fairness, merits get addressed when parties respond to motions. That's why I was making it clear what the court's question was. Thank you, counsel. Timing only question. Uh, David Ochoa for Sun City Anthem. Um, you know, if we set it on short time, we're still going to have to file a response to it, Your Honor, so I have to take that in consideration about what I might potentially do and what, once we see the documents, like you said, there's no attachments to what's proposed currently, so, you know, I, I would still like to file an opposition potentially once I see that, so that I have to take that in consideration, so that's why I'm opposed to the timing of it currently. Just another reason why I said I'm not going to hear it this week, right? Which is why I said next Wednesday, which is as parties who file lots of order shortening times in other cases, you know that that's giving, that's one of the things the court was taking into account in saying next Wednesday because they chose to file it when they chose to file it and not do it months ago, then asking for it to be heard, well, it doesn't even say when it, it just says before the trial, so. I would accommodate that before the trial, but still give the maximum amount of time without putting at the time of the calendar call while well, all parties would need to have everything available to it, just trying to balance everybody's needs. You, of course, would have an opportunity to oppose it, and the appropriate date would be my next question. If I did the 29th, what date people need for oppositions? If 
that clarification. Any opposition to setting it on the 29th? Same day as the motion for reconsideration. I have to set it before the trial. David Ochoa for Sun City Anthem. It's, it's fine, Your Honor. You can set it before the trial. Council for Stokes on behalf of Jimmy Jack. Do you have a position? Well, uh, yes, Your Honor. Just on uh, procedurally, uh, I, I mean, if, if Your Honor is going to set it for the 29th, then uh, we're going to file an opposition, of course. But mm -hmm. uh, procedurally, uh, respectfully, I believe it's, it's just way too late in the game for such motions to be filed. But I Council, isn't that to the parties? Council, I'm going to stop you the same way as I stopped Council for Sun City. Okay. We're talking okay. purely procedural, and you can't have the advantage of seeing how many people are waiting in our gallery to have their matters heard. We're trying to balance everybody's needs. Parties have more than okay. have, have an opportunity, just like when other parties who are speaking in this case have filed their OSTs. Everybody gets a chance to respond. It's just a matter of what you pick as an opposition date, right? So. Uh, how about ne next Tuesday, Your Honor? No, not the day before. The court has to read it and well, be prepared. Think it through too. Well, Council, you're going to Monday's a holiday. Monday's a holiday, <coughs> so I was thinking Friday. Today's only Tuesday. Now the court's appreciative okay, and right. have been very accommodating right. with everyone's schedule, but Council, my other choice is to do it this week, and I thought one of the council was not available this week. That's true, Your Honor. Friday's Friday's fine for us. I thought Friday sounded yeah, great. Just... Okay, so here's what we're doing: the OST set at 9 a.m. On the 29th, same date. Okay. You all are here. I'm not going to fill this in right now because, well, first off, you all put the wrong apartment even on this. Yeah, it says 24 on 31, but it's okay. Um, so we've got to do a little bit of edits here. We've got to do the dates. So it's going to be heard 9 a.m. on the 29th. You're all here or on the phone. So you all hear the date and time. Yes? Yes. Yes. David Ochoa, yes. Okay. Yes, you are. Okay. Um, so here we, now we need an opposition date and time. The opposition date and time, the farthest the court can do it, seems to be the request of the parties. Seems to be I can do it on this Friday, May 24th, by 3 p.m. Because you've got to give the court a little bit of time to actually read everything, right? Seems to me, if I'm accommodating you all, that you're not really going to have a chance to do a reply, counsel, but that really is because you chose to file when you chose to file. Right? Understood, Your Honor. So we need to give everyone the maximum amount of time to get everything taken care of. And the court takes no position on anything other than I'm just doing scheduling. So May 24th at 3 p.m. is the oppositions. Everybody understand? And when I include the term oppositions, I include the term oppositions and joinders to oppositions because no one gets, you know, can't call something a joinder and then file it later. So 3 p.m., whatever I have by 3 p.m. with a courtesy copy to the court as well so I can take it home for my weekend reading. I'm not leaving at 3 p.m., but anyway. Um, got it? And we'll get this. I'm not going to sign everything right now. I want a courtroom full of people. I need to take care of everybody else. So you can pick this up by end of day. And you're going to need to... Do you have extra copies by chance with you that you can hand to counsel? I have been uh, emailed within the hour of the hour. Okay. Email work okay within the hour versus... Because otherwise I'm going to put personal service on this. We'll accept by email. Mr. Hong, you probably want email too, don't you? Yes, yes, Your Honor, that's fine. Why don't you get it quicker? Okay, so email, and just make sure with your email that you provide a copy of the confirmation because the court, if it gets raised as an issue next week, then I'm going to have to ask, so make sure you have the email confirmations, okay? So Council? I'm through, so I'm through, I'm just going to get your Honor, this is a joke copy, we have on 529 at 8.30. Oh, sorry, both are at 8.30. I'm sorry. You're about to tell me the motion to with the OST is going to be 8.30 as well. Thank you for that point of clarification. I routinely say 9 o'clock. I should have said 8.30. So both will be at 8.30. And I interrupted you. My apologies. So please go ahead. And then June 3 at 8.35, Your Honor. Correct. So we'll see 8.30 on the 29th and 8.45 on June 3rd, subject to things that may or may not happen on the 29th. Okay? Thank Appreciate you. it. Thank you so very much. Everyone who's patiently waiting, I am moving forward. Okay. We're trying. So now we're going to move on to page 21, Denise Barnes versus Bankruptcy Estate of Ross.